Some AEW, all elite wrestling news and notes. Chris Graham here on Augusta Free Press. First, uh, to the identity of the person who is under the devil mask. I'm having some fun here, obviously. This is a wrestling talk here. Uh, the devil mask character has been looming behind the scenes, behind the stage, so to speak, the last several weeks. And uh, uh, in the in, injecting into the storylines involving uh, AEW world champion MJF Maxwell Jacob Friedman. I got to say I'm on the same page here as, as WWE Hall of Famer Bully Ray, who works in Impact TNA Wrestling and also is uh, one of the co-hosts of Busted Open Radio. This week on Busted Open, Bully Ray said, what if it's CM Punk? I actually had to thought this week watching um, watching Dynamite that what if it was CM Punk? It would make a lot of sense. Uh, Bully Ray went for the nat. He said it would be sheer genius. I would stand in the middle of Times Square, he said, with a giant sign held above my head that said, Tony Khan is a genius. Or I'll just kiss his ass in the Macy's store window. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, I, I would I would hold a sign over my head. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> but maybe the kiss in the ass will be deserved. MJF scheduled to defend his AEW world title against Jay White at the Full Gear pay-per-view on November 18th. There's no way, though, that Khan's going to put the belt on White, even though White is a former IWGP champ uh, and, and could be down the line, a guy who's a contender uh, to actually you know help carry the company along forward. But um, right now, Maxwell Jacob Freeman is by far AEW's most marketable star, and you've got to have him with the with the world title belt on his waist. Uh, but to Kron's credit, thus, uh, he of late has been building his Dynamite and Collision weekly TV shows almost entirely around the champ, having MJF main event Collision last week in a great match. Just got to see it last night, finally, on, on DVR. Uh, MJF and Kenny Omega, an instant classic, really good match. Should have That should have been the pay-per-view main event. Let's just be honest about that. Uh, Khan's also teasing upcoming feuds for MJF with Ring of Honor TV champ Samoa Joe and the former TNT champ Wardlow. Um, now, the money match for AEW for months had seemed to be what was appearing to be an inevitable MJF CM Punk showdown. They got scuttled when Khan fired Punk after that backstage incident at All In in London back in August. Um, Punk has since been rumored to be interested in a return to WWE. The wrestling rumors are barely worth the breath that it takes to disseminate them. Um, it's funny to see Bully Ray speculating on Punk being under that devil mask because, like I said, I've, I've been thinking that for, for a little bit of time, in part because I don't 100% buy that Punk got fired and that was legit. Uh, among the reasons I'm, I'm skeptical there, I, I can't get around why Khan who who has said since that he was supposedly scared for his life, would send Punk out to wrestle the first match on the biggest pay-per-view in his company's history, let him go over Samoa Joe, uh, if what happened backstage was you know enough to merit firing Punk a few days later. You know, I doubt that Khan and his AEW team, uh, that being his EVPs, uh, Matt and Nick Jackson and Kenny Omega, are disciplined enough to keep the dirt sheets from picking up on Punk, the Punk firing being a work. But if it was, it would be sheer genius, no doubt about that. Um, more AEW news uh, that I wanted to go into just from yesterday. Uh, the news that uh, confirming that Ric Flair is all elite. Um, this is Khan's latest effort at gaining cultural relevancy. Now, Khan had been reportedly linked to to, to Flair, the you know multi-time former NWA, WCW, WWE world champion. Uh, back in 2021, but it was right around the time that, unfortunately for Flair, from a timing perspective, those sexual assault allegations came out uh, from that Dark Side of the Ring episode, The Plane Ride from Hell. And um, so uh, it, it seemed, it, I think if I can recall that period of time right, it was the fall of 2021, uh, that it seemed that uh, AEW was probably right about to announce a relationship with Flair at that point. Uh, that obviously got pushed uh, behind the scenes. Uh, Flair then finally uh, last week made his debut in AEW um, with uh, appearing with Sting, uh, you know, speculation that he maybe booked himself uh, at the time because he mentioned that he would be along the, for the ride with Sting as Sting is sort of on his retirement tour. He's going to retire uh, with a final match at the revolution pay-per-view early next year. Um, but uh 
uh, Khan announcing uh, that uh, he's got a deal for a multi a multi year contract with Flair. Um, Flair seventy four multi years, uh, and the way the hard way he lived his life. Good good, good luck to, to Flair there. He's he is man. I tell you what, uh, he, he's he's something else still all in this day and age. Um, and so, I mean, that's the news there. The fallout from the allegations, I guess they figure maybe that's gone away. Um, I'm one, I, I will point out, I read quite a few stories about this yesterday as I was preparing my story. I didn't, I didn't really see much about the, the, uh, the stuff from 2021. So, um, the, the issue, uh, you know, obviously trying to gain the culture of relevancy, uh, Ric Flair is still Ric Flair, no matter the fact that he's 74 years old, long since, uh, not going to be a value as a wrestler in the ring. Uh, but AEW is looking for some some ratings help here. Um, their their show is down twenty point one percent year to date from where it was this time last year, and so uh, any kind of a boost there uh, would certainly be welcome uh, from Tony Khan. Uh, one more bit of AEW news, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, I'm kind of noting that T- Dave Meltzer, uh, who has been a Tony Khan almost sycophant the last few years. Uh, uh, might I mean, there's indications maybe it, he's turning on Tony Khan a bit. Um, Melter last week made news with two bits of heavy-handed criticism for Khan and his recent booking of AEW. Um, the first bit of low-hanging fruit, uh, he was he was commenting on the booking of of Rob Van Dam on a show that also included Flair and and Sting. You know, guys who are over fifty. In the case of Sting, over sixty. In the case of Flair, over seventy. Um, you know, Edge is at uh, the former Edge, I should say. Now, uh, uh, Adam Copeland is, I think, forty nine. Christian, uh, Christian Cage, uh, is, I think, fifty one. I remember that right. So there's a there's a and Chris Jericho, of course, Jeff Jarrett, the Hardys, Dustin Rhodes, all guys at or over fifty. Uh, and and the point being from from Meltzer, hey, there's there's a bunch of older guys there, uh, in in that company, um. The other is a sign that maybe some of the guys that mentioned Matt and Nick Jackson and Kenny Omega, maybe they're not happy because famously uh, Meltzer uh, is is friends with 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 that group. And uh, a lot of his insight, a lot of his inside tips come from that group. You can tell just based on the, the nature of those inside tips. And so uh, on a Wrestling Observer radio podcast earlier this week, uh, Meltzer went nuclear a bit on Khan saying that, uh, a lot of stuff is being decided at much later periods than previous guys are getting their information on what they're doing later. Decisions are being later. Um, he's talking about the booking and how uh, he's being told that uh, performers don't even know what the long-term direction of certain story angles is. They're doing stuff, coming up with ideas. When you really don't know what the long-term direction is, it's kind of hard to you know know what you're supposed to be doing. So, you know, the first is an observational criticism from Meltzer. That's him saying, hey, there's a bunch of old guys on the roster. The second one, a lot of stuff is being decided late. They don't really know a long-term direction. That's not something he's making up. That's something he's being fed, and you can you can guess who's feeding it. And it's, you know, it is what it is. But Meltzer telling us that the talent is unhappy with booking decisions and lack of co- uh, long-term direction uh, is telling us that those guys who just recently signed long-term extensions, the Jacksons, Omega, and actually Adam Page as well, another member of what – the group that they call themselves the elite may not be happy with where things are going in, in uh, AEW right now. Who knows? I mean, you know, if, if the CM Punk firing was real, that was something that was a couple year effort by the AEVPs. What are they doing now? Trying to get Tony Khan fired. <laughs> I say jokingly, but uh, you know, maybe they're going above his head to uh, Shad Khan. Uh, I was providing all the money for this. So in any case, um, that's the latest in AEW wrestling news this week. If you have any questions for me, anything for a mailbag, topics you want me to address, please email me at chris at augustafreepress.com.